Hello everybody, a uh, new year and a new video. My name is Paul from Cryonetic and what I'll be doing today is just talking a little bit about um, my tutorials that I've been doing and just upcoming videos and just some things that I've been experimenting with in the last couple of weeks. I've taken a break over the holiday periods but now it's a new year and I will be re well not re-uploading but I will be uploading um, new videos so uh, keep an eye out there's a lot of new tutorials coming and um, I hope all of you will like it but first thing that I just wanted to talk about a little bit is while I was doing my level design tutorial a few people mentioned that I should never use flat shaded surfaces for uh, to to render inside of a a game engine it just got me thinking a little bit and I spoke with a few friends and they pretty much said the same thing and I understand completely where they come from but one thing that you have to keep in mind is that you are working uh, on a product that you essentially you want to cheat someone's senses into ma making them believe that it's real and it really does not matter how you do it just as long as you accomplish your end goal so essentially uh, these were the two objects the the two tables that i created and i made them flat shaded as you can see they're flat shaded if you smooth shade them they turn out like this and the reason why i did this is there is a very easy way to actually just get around this if you enable smooth shading and you go over to your object data and you just click on auto smooth it will make it flat again even though it is smooth shaded and then from there you can like select the edges that you want and uh, you can hit control e and you can mark it as sharp and then, then it just all depends on what you want to do so then i can also add a bevel to it and do something like this so that it has these nice round corners so you can see bevels control b and you just roll your mouse wheel depending on how much you want to do but then i'm going to increase the face count and in all honesty for what we were creating at that point it seems a little bit unnecessary to add this amount of detail for something that the player is just going to run past uh, that that's what i'm trying to get at you have to at a certain point just think to yourself what the player will see and if you if you are creating your game whatever method you can use to cheat and to create i mean this this is not even this is so little verts and uh triangles that it probably won't even and that's actually for everything i think this is like yeah you that's know, like 80 triangles so it will have almost no impact on performance inside of the game engine itself so if you can get away with it then by all means do it i'm not saying that it's the best method to do it as i've been saying while we're going through the tutorial is that you go over you create everything that you want to see in your level from the beginning and then what you do is once you've finished you go over it again and you just see where you can improve or where you can increase performance that's essentially what you need to do so everything that i've created i probably will go over again but uh, at that given point it was what i needed it was the quickest way to do it so that is what i did all right so that is just what i wanted to talk about and then i just wanted to bring uh attention to a plugin for blender called hard ops now let's just bring it up over here i'll put the link in the description below it is a paid plugin as you can see it is 15 dollars or you pay minimum of 15 dollars and if you like what the offer is doing you can actually pay more if you want to okay so um essentially what hard ops does uh, well let's just go through here it doesn't actually say here but it just makes modeling hard surfaces a lot easier and I'm just going to show you like a, a quick example I'm gonna take this cube and they uh, bind all the keys to to Q so if I push Q C sharpen and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, another cube I'm gonna scale it in now this is actually what he does in his tutorial video itself 
All right, so I, you make the cube. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to select the one, select the other, hit Q, slice. And then you got a nice cut if we hide that into your model. Very little distortion. And all the edges and everything still remain the way that they are. And as the author goes in one of his tutorial videos, he just goes, selects that, control B, bevels it out, select these. Uh, actually just selects the edges here, control B, bevel it out. And then you can add more cuts over here. So essentially to create something that looks like a hard surface is very easy. The process has been simplified to such an extent that I'm, I'm very grateful because I've, it's, it's not that you can't do it without this plugin. It's just that the steps involved to do it is just time consuming. And as you're getting, uh, or as you're creating more content or you're creating more models, you'll eventually would just want to find shortcuts on how to do certain things. And this is definitely one of the best shortcuts I found to create hard surface models. So just uh, keep that in mind. If you guys have $15 to spend, I highly recommend go just look at some of the tutorials on his YouTube page, Master Xeon 1001. I'll put the links in the description below. It is just very, very useful. All right. And then just one last thing before I go, I wanted to bring up, uh, let's just go over here. If you want to do some 2D art and you wanted to do some animation or anything in that line, um, as of today, today is what the 5th of January. You have about four days left to do, to still get this. Spriter over here, Spriter Pro is a very easy way to create a 2D character. If you saw one of my previous videos where I created a 2D character inside a blender, that process is very much simplified inside of Spriter. It's going for a dollar at the moment and I highly recommend go buy it. It is, even if you're not going to use it, it is a very easy program. You can maybe give it to someone else that you think it wants to do 2D animation or just a sprite based animation. Um, it is, um, quite an awesome tool. And there's a couple of other things here, but to be honest, just in this first dollar over here, I was looking at it and I'm like, definitely, uh, well there, if you pay more than the average, you get like a sprite or pro pack, but if you're going to draw your own characters, that's not really going to, to matter. Um, try, I think there is a free version on their website. So, uh, try it out, but it's definitely worth the one dollar that you have to spend to get it. So uh, That's all from me uh, for now. There are a couple of videos that are coming before the end of January All of these will be finished uploading as I have been working on them. I just haven't been uploading them um, I kind of went through an odd phase myself but there's a new character creation tutorial that is coming that I am going to upload to replace the one that I didn't finish and I'm almost done with it and someone already asked on YouTube and I said I want to finish it first before I start uploading otherwise it might go in a direction that I don't like which happened with the previous one and I'll just stop uploading again so the level design tutorials is up and coming the final videos for that will be uploaded shortly or soon, let's just say soon, soon, and a character creation tutorial. And then I'm going to be creating a weapon design tutorial where we'll be creating some basic uh, first person weapons like uh, pistols, machine guns, and knives. And we will be animating those and then importing them into Unreal Engine 4 so that we can use them with the Unreal Engine 4 skeleton. So that's quite an extensive one. The creation process is fairly, it's not difficult, but it's just time consuming. So those are a few things to keep uh, an eye out. I will be focusing purely on this channel um, 
for this entire year for 2017 so a lot of new content will be coming a few people have asked i saw someone today made a comment when i uploaded my new uh image that they want some uh, is it pronounced krita or krita um it's a 2d image program they want some tutorials on that i haven't used it but I'll, I'll I'll look into it. There's a lot of things that I'll look into it. So if you have any requests, if you have anything that you want uh, to be made easier, or if you just want to ask like one simple thing, you can check me up on Twitter. Um, there's my Twitter link over here. And you can also just uh, follow me on Facebook. All the links, description below. So, with all of that said, and I know there was a lot, and if you actually listened all the way uh, through to the end, thank you very much. So, you can give this video a like. If you didn't like it, you can leave a dislike, leave a comment down below, and I will see you in the next video. I thank you all very much for watching. Bye-bye.